horror villains never stay dead. And so it seemed, the same could be said of the horror genre itself. After stricter regulations threatened to kill off the genre for good in the previous two years, Universal's re-releases of Dracula and Frankenstein were immensely profitable. With their confidence restored, they invested in a host of darker-themed content, reviving horror from certain doom. Amongst this resurgence came Tower of London, which was not an outright horror, but straddled the thin line that the studios briefly walked. Horror and history collided. The Tudor setting and political plotting masked some of the film's glimy content, including various methods of horrid torture. Roland V. Lee, the director of 1939's Son of Frankenstein, was behind the camera, directing a cast that should delight any classic horror movie fan. Basil Rathbone, right on the brink of beginning his spectacular run as Sherlock Holmes. A twitchy young Vincent Price in one of his very earliest performances. And of course, Boris Karloff, as the bald, club-footed executioner named Maud. Tower of London tells the tale of Richard III and his sneaky plans to become the King of England. Richard's HBO subscription must have expired, as he should have known. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. Driven by his undying lust for power, he plots to bump off every member of his family until he is next in line for the throne. Disturbingly, that line includes his two very young nephews. Richard is aided by the villainous Maud, whose casual feelings toward torture are both amusing and disturbing. The film features a few notable battle sequences. Some of the action is riveting, some of it... Yeah, not so much. Oh no, you don't! Oh. Ah. The war scenes pushed an already stretched budget right overboard, as the production was first troubled by strong winds, and later, the rain machines made hasty work of the extras' cardboard helmets. Reshoots were required, but the final product of swords clashing in the realistic British weather is suitably entertaining. The cast of horror regulars certainly elevate the film beyond its material. A deadly drinking game between Rathbone and Price, which was mostly improvised, is a standout scene. Though often billed as a horror movie, modern audiences may find the more horrific elements and torture scenes too few and too lacklustre. A darker, horror-orientated semi-remake was released in 1962, directed by Roger Corman, with Vincent Price raised from supporting character duties to the lead role of Richard III. Are you content to die there? The remake may sit better with new audiences, but there is still a fair amount of old-school charm to be enjoyed in the 1939 edition. And with that, we are at the end of another decade. The 1930s saw both the horror genre's greatest peaks and lowest troughs so far. Ultimately, the successes outweigh the failures. Many regard these ten years as a favourite, and many of the decade's interpretations of classic monsters live on to this day. Like one of Maud's horrible torture machines, I must force myself to pick my top three films from the ten selected for the 1930s. In no particular order, I recommend to V. 1931, Svengali, for that classic early 30s gothic feel. 1932, Vampir, for its unique and early art house techniques. And 1933, La Llorona, for its clear admiration of local folklore and history. Let me know your favourite horrors of the 1930s in the comments below. Karloff knows there's plenty to choose from. On that note, I will see you again, boys and ghouls, in the 1940s.